What's up guys? I always get questions about Amazon sellers getting negative seller feedback and not knowing what to do. Are you one of them? If so, let's talk about that today because if you deal with enough sales and customers, there will always be a time you have to deal with negative seller feedback. I'll teach you how to do it in this video. What's up? I'm Nick Young from Seller Tradecraft and I'm so excited to teach you something new today. Stay with me till the end to figure out how to remove negative seller feedback on your Amazon Seller Central account. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button to get the latest information and tips about selling private label products on Amazon. The first thing we need to know is why reviews are so important at this point. And this is because with reviews you establish social proof of your product and your account. It's the best way to build buyer's trust. Most of the time, we only think about getting positive reviews and how to avoid negative reviews and don't give much attention to neutral ratings. When you get a neutral rating, which is considered a three star, consider this in the negative feedback category since Amazon only considers four and five star ratings to be positive. It's not good to receive a three star review and it will only pull your seller rating down. Receiving two and one star ratings will certainly hurt your ranking. Now, let's point out the difference between product review and seller feedback. This is super important because sometimes buyers don't know the difference and can leave negative seller feedback when it's actually meant to be a negative product review. And if we know the difference, it's actually more possible to take action as a seller and remove it. So a product review, it's feedback regarding the purchased item from Amazon. It's about how customers feel about the product. Was the product high quality? Was it worth the price they paid? Any questions that's related to the product is product feedback and not seller feedback. On the other hand, seller feedback is about customer service or the buying experience. Did the customer receive the right product? Did they receive a welcome email where all their questions and doubts answered? So anything related to these questions is basically what we call seller feedback or seller review. But you have to remember, no matter how hard you try with customer service, if you sell a cheap and bad product, you'll regret it later because negative reviews will appear sooner or later and it will drop your business. Remember, always sell good quality products. Sometimes the buyer can give a negative seller feedback based on the shipment. So if the buyer has a delivery issue or late shipment, then this is feedback for Amazon fulfillment and not for the seller. In this case, Amazon will remove the rating on the back end, so this way it won't impact your rating. Just remember that seller feedback can be tricky. If the customer leaves a product review, but at the same time, it partially has comments about the seller's service, then it's not removable for Amazon. Another point to know why reviews are so important is that you can lose the chance to get the buy box if you receive negative seller feedback. And that's because Amazon calculates your average feedback rating based on the feedback you received over the last year. So basically, you need a rating of over 95% to make sure you have these chances. And if you have less than 90%, then there's a good chance that you won't get the buy box that easily. Amazon really values their reputation and the customer experience is incredibly important to them. So if you have terrible seller feedback, it's a sign to them that you're ineligible to get the buy box and it'll be harder for you to sell on Amazon. So if you have negative seller feedback, don't panic yet because there are certain types of feedback that can actually be removed with just a little bit of work on your part. Now before I dive into each one of these, let's just recap and see what can and can't be removed. First we have product reviews. Second, anything that's obscene, abusive language, or spiteful remarks, and anything that can be considered offensive. Next is if any information about Amazon users is included, that can be removed. Any kind of promotional content can also be removed. And finally, there's feedback that consists entirely of, of information about Amazon fulfillment or customer experience that's dealt with Amazon. This actually won't be removed, but it will be struck out and therefore will not count towards your seller feedback rating. All right guys, I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and remove negative seller feedback. So this is a Seller Central page, this is the home page. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the performance section, then click feedback. And then what we're gonna do is you can see this is all the seller feedback here, okay? And this is what's gonna show up in your seller storefront. Now, Amazon has made it quite easy to go ahead and dispute these claims. So let's go ahead and find one. Um, you know, I think my team has already kind of disputed all the ones, but you can see there are a couple um, right here. Um, this is product related. And so what you have to do is you just go to actions. Then you just go to, oh, oops, actually this one's already disputed. So you just go to actions and then you click request removal. And if this feedback falls under the criteria that we mentioned, which is there's obscene language, or it's related to a product, or it's an advertisement, or anything of that sort that I've mentioned in the video at, thus far, then you can go ahead and request removal, and Amazon will go ahead and remove it if it's not relevant to seller feedback. Again, if you 
need to, and this is a last resort, actually reply to the customer in hopes that they will change, they will change their feedback because it's met that 60 day limit. All you have to do is post a public reply and you can do so here. So you can go ahead and edit your response and it becomes very easy for you to publicly post that response in hopes that customers will go ahead and change their feedback. The main thing if you do post a response is you wanna make sure that, um, that people can see that and that um, your feedback uh, and your response is something that aligns with the customer service brand that you wanna to convey to your customers. Um, hope that makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you need further walkthrough. But you can make this all easier by using automated tools like a tool called Feedback Wiz, which is an Amazon feedback manager software designed to prevent negative feedbacks and more. We'll have a link in the description below. Just make sure you check out the tool. The reason why it's helpful to use software like this is because it really simplifies your job and saves you a lot of time that can be used for improving your business or your business strategy. Sometimes buyers forget to leave a review after buying a product no matter if they liked it a lot and it's better to have an automated process to get customers to review your product. With tools like Feedback Wiz, you can instantly receive feedback notifications which gives you the time to act quickly. That way you can check real quickly if you receive negative feedback or seller feedback and if it falls in one of the criteria that I discussed earlier, you can go ahead and just contact Amazon and have it removed as soon as possible. Has this information been helpful for you so far? If so, let me know in the comments below if you've used any of these methods and if it's worked for you. But that's not all guys. Let's move to my one final piece of advice just in case it's needed since sometimes these steps are not that unusual and it takes a lot of work to get something removed. Um, but just, it just takes a little more time and effort. And what I'm talking about is actually reaching out directly to the customer. Just keep in mind that Amazon gives customers 60 days to remove their response after they leave the seller feedback. This means you can't take too long to reach out to the buyer because in that case, you can miss an opportunity to get rid of feedback in a really simple way. I'll give you some tips about how to properly reach out to a customer. So first off, be timely and respectful with your response. Like I mentioned, you gotta contact the customer ASAP. Don't offer customers any incentive that could mean a violation of Amazon guidelines. And this means like offering a free product, trying to bribe them with money or gift card, um, since this is actually against Amazon's guidelines. And remember that reviews can be edited or deleted retroactively by the customer if you reach out to them properly. That's why it's important to reach out to the customer just in case you really need it. And you make, gotta make sure to always be polite. And lastly, in case the feedback doesn't break Amazon's rules and you don't receive a response from the buyer after a reasonable amount of time, you can reply to their comment directly. So first of all, you have to apologize for any inconvenience, including not meeting their expectations. And, and you can explain that you're doing all that's possible to stop it from happening again. Just keep in mind that you have to respond to negative seller feedback as a last resort because in this case, you're not just sending an email, you're doing something publicly. So if you're gonna respond within the app, then do it professionally and don't get too emotional. Keep it simple. Remember, always apologize for any inconvenience the buyer's experienced. Buyers have 90 days to leave their feedback after buying the product. And Amazon can remove any feedback that's against their policies within 60 days of the date of the feedback. So basically after these 60 days, the feedback can't be removed by Amazon. This means you have to be very careful with your method so it won't affect your seller rating. If you want to have a copy of the step-by-step -step method, you can also download this document. The link is in the description below. Well guys, that's what I wanted you to learn today. Negative seller feedback and negative reviews don't mean the end of the world. There is always a solution. I want to know, do you use a proper method to reach out to customers? Have you gotten better reviews using any of my tips? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Don't feel hopeless for just a couple negative reviews, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep learning new tricks and tips for your private label business. Then hit subscribe to receive all upcoming videos we have for you. Until then, I'll see you next time.